There's been a lot of movies that copy Alien. Forbidden World, Creature, Galaxy of Terror, but none of them seem to take as much inspiration from Alien than Leviathan, which really is just the same idea made up by Ridley Scott just underwater. But does a ripoff of a good movie mean that there's still hope that Leviathan would be worth watching? Let's find out. First off, there are some familiar faces here. Peter Weller, Daniel Stern, and Ernie Hudson. But down here, he's not busting ghosts. Uh, we have the tools, we have the talent. To set the scene, we're told that we're in the Atlantic Ocean. And this is day 87 of a 90 day work period. So they're almost done with their shift. What's the crew doing exactly? mostly mining silver for the Tri-Oceanic Corporation. I can already see where this is going. The first thing we see is the crew working. Everything seems to be going pretty well. That is, until quitting time. This guy De Jesus is coming back to the ship and he's starting to run out of oxygen. The others get him inside to safety, but here we learn the very real danger that they're in. Their main concern is from the pressure of working so deep in the ocean. As Six Pack says later on, he once saw a guy's entire body get sucked up into his helmet at once. Ugh. Pressure just crammed his whole body up into his helmet. Now that everyone is safe, we can meet the crew. I already mentioned De Jesus and Six Pack, but there's also Willie Williams, Justin Jones or Jonesy. Bowman, Cobb, Beck, or Becky, and Doc, the ship's doctor. If you haven't sensed the theme, they all have nicknames and are all buddy buddy, just like another crew we've seen before. Anyway, they all give each other crap and joke around until their leader, Beck, comes in to lay down the law. They only have three days left, but someone has to do shack duty, which is basically clean up the entire ship. No one wants to do it at first, but after learning that if they do it now, then they might have a day off, they all jump at the idea. So how exhilarating. We get to watch people clean. If I wanted to do that, I would just sit up in the living room. Well, we do see a prank that Six Pack plays on Williams. He hides a spider looking thing that looks an awful lot like a face hugger in one of the suits Williams is cleaning. It jumps out, scares her, and ha ha ha. She pays him back later on, however, and hides it in his bed. When he finds it, he freaks out on her. You think it's funny? You think it's funny when he ate this damn thing? Hey man, don't dish it out if you can't take it. Beck comes in to defuse the situation, and for their little games, they get put on sea duty tomorrow. What's sea duty? Well, basically they go around blowing stuff up, looking for silver. Sounds like a reward, not a punishment. But anyway, while they're out there, they lose contact with Six Pack, and Williams has to go looking for him. While poking around, she eventually finds an old sunken ship named Leviathan in Russian. What? Leviathan. She takes a look inside, thinking that maybe Six Pack wandered in, while the crew digs a little deeper into this boat. It turns out that there is a ship called the Leviathan on record, but it's currently active duty in the Baltic Sea. This is definitely not active duty. Someone wiped this ship from existence. But why? While they're looking into the history of the ship, Williams finds Six Pack. And he's found something too, a safe. On board their ship, they crack it open, hoping to find some sunken treasure inside. But instead, it's just vodka. What'd they expect from a Russian ship? Vodka! They do find a video of the captain explaining a little bit more of what happened on board. Most of his crew were sick and dying from what he can assume is a tropical infection. And that's about it. Beck doesn't really care about the tape. 
But it gets the Doc thinking, and now he's confident. This ship was deliberately sunk. Well, Beck took the big bottle of vodka and locked it away so the crew wouldn't get drunk. But they sneak in and get it anyway. When they all go for a drink, it's just water. Beck dumped out the booze and replaced it with regular water, not trusting his own crew wouldn't do exactly what they did. But little do they know, he just saved their lives. Because what Beck didn't see is that Six Pack swiped a flask out of the safe, and he and Bowman are enjoying a few drinks. The effects of whatever contaminated the alcohol is immediately noticed. Starting with Six Pack, he seems hung over, which would be normal, but his skin is starting to flake off too. I don't know about you, but I've never been that drunk before. The doc digs a little deeper while the rest of the crew goes out and works. They do have a quota to meet, by the way. The doc works with other doctors via the internet to try and diagnose six pack. The only thing they can come up with is genetic alteration. After a hard day's work, Beck goes to the infirmary to check in on Six Pack. But he's dead. The only thing they know for sure is that he went inside the ship. So they examine Williams, who comes back clean. For the heck of it, he looks at everyone else too, and they're all fine. Except Bowman, which shared a drink with him from the flask. She's not doing so well. She wanders in to talk to Six Pack, and she sees how gross he's looking. Knowing that she's going to have a similar fate, she offs herself before it can get any worse. The doctor and Beck tell the rest of the crew what's happened and how things are starting to hit the fan. Worse yet, there's a hurricane coming, so they can't just evacuate. A hurricane? Yeah, we're delayed 12 hours. Suddenly, they hear a crash and go to investigate. Only to see that it's Six Pack and Bowman who have started to fuse together. Gross. Six Pack wanted to get inside Bowman, but not like this. After seeing the monstrosity, the crew knows that they have to deal with it and get rid of the body. So they load it up and send it off to sea. But a leg breaks off. Ugh. I'm sure that'll come back to play later on. Now they try to find an answer to how this all happened and it doesn't take them long to find the flask. Which should be good news. As long as they didn't drink any of the vodka, you're safe. So the crew tries to keep themselves busy to just wait out the storm raging above them. But they're not safe. They have a leg to worry about. De Jesus is the first to be attacked by this eel looking thing. Jones knows that De Jesus is a goner and there's nothing that he can do about it. So he locks him up in the kitchen and runs to go get help. By the time they get back, De Jesus has already broken out of there. As if things couldn't get any worse, the power cuts out. Well, they all regroup and arm up. They find out that the creature got into their blood supply, so it must feed off blood. They also learn that it doesn't only absorb the bodies it consumes, but also the person's memories. So, this thing is getting smarter and smarter as it eats. Assuming that all hope is lost, and not wanting to infect the world with this disease, the doc releases escape pods to the surface, empty, and awaits his fate. Back to the rest of the crew, and Cobb isn't looking so well. He was scratched pretty badly earlier on, and now he's a goner. An alien bursts out of his chest, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, I mean a leviathan bursts out of his chest, and his hand has a mouth, which actually looks kind of cool. Williams runs for help and tells the guys how it got Cobb. Later on, they see the note left by Doc and call in to headquarters. Miss Martin informs them that the hurricane has gotten worse, and they won't be able to pick them up for 48 hours. But by then, they'll be fish food. After hanging up with her, they check out the news and learn that it's already been reported that the ship was a total loss and all the crew are dead. 
showing that there really is little hope of getting out of this ship alive. But they're not dead yet. Their only hope for survival is to get into some suits and use air tanks to float to the surface. After getting past every imaginable obstacle, including the creature and the ship itself, they make it to the loading bay and suit up. The others head up to the top of the ocean while Beck stays behind to fight the creature to give him a fighting chance. Finally, he gets into his suit and heads to the surface himself, like a reverse skydiver. As the ship starts to implode, they all make it to the surface. And guess what? No hurricane. It's actually clear skies. They shoot flares to get some help, but then, as if a flying mutant fish monster wasn't enough, now they have to deal with sharks. Talk about having a bad day. It's like the writers just wanted to be like, but wait, there's more. Well, eventually the sharks leave him alone and a rescue chopper comes and picks him up. But wait, there's more. The monster comes up to the surface and attacks him. Beck throws a bomb inside its mouth and they steal another shot from a famous movie. Smile, you son of a bitch. My goodness, first alien, now Jaws? Come up with an original idea. Well, they all load up and are flown to a nearby oil rig, where Miss Martin is waiting to greet them. Like, she didn't just lie to them about the hurricane and basically sign their death certificate. It's okay. Beck gives her a piece of his mind. And that was Leviathan, a high production, well acted, big budget ripoff. This movie's biggest weakness is that it doesn't try anything new. Just because it happens underwater and not in space doesn't mean that it's not a ripoff. It also takes a really long time to get going. I think they spent a little too much time getting to know the crew in this one. That's time that should have been spent showing us this gross looking monster, which honestly isn't in the movie nearly enough. Stan Winston did the effects for this movie and it seems like his time and effort were just squandered. Like I said, the acting was good, which is kind of what I expected with well-known names in this movie. What I didn't expect was the well-done sets. That was nice. It did look like a ship that would be at the bottom of the ocean. It was dirty, worn, and looked like it was on its last leg. Leviathan is okay. There are definitely worse ways to spend an hour and a half, but only if you've seen Alien too many times. I give it two contaminated Russian flasks out of four. You all try to get some rest. Hey, I ain't gonna never be able to sleep again in life, ever. <laughs>